Welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Today, we're going to cover the second part of our anomaly detection uh, walkthrough. The first time uh, last week, we went through using Amazon Guard Duty to monitor some of our logs and understand if there's any anomalous behavior occurring in our accounts. Today, we're actually going to do this in CloudWatch. So we're going to use CloudWatch events to publish a metric, and then we're going to monitor for anomalies on that metric. Uh, if you'd like, you can follow along by GitHub. I'll have this example published on github.com slash Pulumi slash Pulumi TV. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, you can see here I already have some code pulled up. Uh, this is something I already started, uh, just that we would have some data already running in the system uh, before we, we moved on with uh, the example. So let me just walk through what I've already done uh, in terms of the anomaly detection, and then uh, we'll see kind of how it currently works, and then we'll add in the actual detection after this. So right now, this first part here is really just about uh, publishing publishing data into CloudWatch. So you can see we create a, a schedule event. Um, this is uh, an AWS CloudWatch event rule. So all we're doing is creating a schedule expression that basically says, every minute this, this rule is going to fire. Um, and uh, for reference, let me just pull this up. Um, you know, the way I figured this out or the way I found this was, you know, I looked at the schedule expressions for rules in AWS, and you can either have cron expressions or you could have um, rate expressions where the rate is, you know, some unit per uh, uh, value. And so here I have, a, um, or some value per unit rather. So this, I have one minute um, in my, in my code here, so you can see I have a rate of one minute. So basically this, this rule will fire every minute and we use our handy dandy um, on event uh, listener here. And so we create a handler um, and I basically just have a very simple function handler. It instantiates uh, a CloudWatch client. Um, this actually is a convenience, by the way, you can do AWS.SDK, even though this is coming from the Plumi AWS provider. So we have this CloudWatch client and then uh, we, we just tell it to put some data. Um, I've created a namespace called Bloomy and uh, have a metric name called Anomaly Example. Obviously, you could do a lot more here. You could do things, you know, like um, uh, dimensions, uh, which you'd expect in a CloudWatch metric. Um, you could also add statistical values that you would expect it to be able to do in a CloudWatch metric. Um, you can change the timestamp. You can do all those things uh, since we're using the just normal uh, CloudWatch SDK. Uh, but in this case, um, all I'm doing is uh, is I'm just going ahead and and publishing this value which I got from up here. Um, normally it's a hundred, and uh, every so often it'll be a thousand. So that's that's all we're doing. And so if we go back to my browser and we pull up uh, CloudWatch, you can actually see that I have this uh, metric posted. We'll actually change this to be the last um, thirty minutes. And you can see that if I look at the sum over the last 30 minutes, I actually ran this a couple times within the same minute at the very beginning. And then, you know, it's been running on a schedule ever since. So you can see this kind of, you know, every minute we have this 100, 100, 100, and then once in a while we'll have 1,000. So that this is going to be our synthetic metric we're going to use uh, for our anomaly detection. So you would expect that normally uh, this is what we want, and then, you know, some anomalous behavior will happen. Obviously, in a real-world scenario, you, you might have... Um, data that's not so smooth and data that's not so easily uh, detected with a threshold, right? So here, we could just use a threshold to detect this um, and then, you know, we'd be done. But in, uh, in a real world example, you might have some kind of curve or something like that that wouldn't be so easy to detect uh, with thresholds. So let's, let's, let's figure out how we can actually detect uh, events on this. So we want to create an alarm. And so we'll do uh, alarm. Uh, and uh, we can create a new cloud watch. Oops. Uh, metric alarm. Oh, where'd that go? Metric alarm. Call this anomaly alarm. And uh, we can take some arguments. Um, and so what we want here is we actually want to um, uh, first give it a name. So we'll give it, you know, a name and a description, right? So we'll give it Anomaly alarm. Uh, we'll have an alarm description because that's useful for the person who get it, who's getting this. Just say, you know, the uh, value was out of 
expected bounds. I don't know. Put something here. Um, and for anomaly alarms, there's actually uh, the comparison operator. And this can be a number of things um, in CloudWatch. You normally would be like less than or something like that. Uh, but in the case of anomaly alarms, let's actually look this up. Um, So this is, this is what we're going to see later, by the way. Uh, and let's see if it has the... Uh, here. Oh, that's not what I want. So I need to find the reference that actually tells me... Um, the less than, greater than thing that I'm looking for. Let's just search that again. Ano alarm anomaly less than. Ah, I think it might be here. I thought it was just, was it not just reading this? <laughs> huh. Well, that's very odd. Let's actually look at our Plumi documentation and maybe we actually have this um, in our docs. I would expect to have that, oops, click the wrong thing. I expect that to have that in the Oh, what do you know? We actually have this um, here. So you can actually see there's a greater than upper threshold. Um, and actually, oh, here, perfect. So I should have come to our own docs in the first place. So you can see that the, the possible values are, are these. Um, and so I will use the uh, less than or greater than upper threshold. So basically this means if it's less than the threshold or it's greater than the threshold, then, then we'll alarm. So we'll use this. And actually, we can probably just use most of this example, so we, we have the description, the comparison operator, we have evaluation periods. Um, we just need to be uh, one period out of the alarm, especially because um, the way that our synthetic data looks, you know, it's only going to be one data point at most anyway, uh, or I mean, statistically could be more, but you know, it's unlikely. Um, and let's just copy this. Uh, and we've modified for our own purposes. So um, this metric, there are no dimensions that we had earlier. We we know the namespace uh, was from earlier here. So we actually, you know, do do the right thing here from a code perspective. We'll make some constants up here. Factor that out, and now we can do this uh, metric namespace and metric name. And down here, we can actually do the same thing. Or actually, the other thing we could do is, um, oh yeah, that's what we want. Yes, so metric name, oops, metric name, and then uh, metric namespace. And the period here is one minute, and the stat we'll use is sum. Um, the unit doesn't really matter here. We can get rid of this. Uh, and then, so that, that's, we'll call this metric M1. And then we'll create an anomaly detection band uh, on M1. And we'll call this just, you know, sum exceeded. Uh, and we'll call this E1. And you can see we actually, you know, have that metric threshold on E1. So that's actually all we need. And so now we can go run me up. And let's 
let's look at this. So uh, things I modified. Oh, wait, I modified the code, which I did. I changed the the values here to to reference these constants. Um, so we'll update that, and then we'll create a new alarm uh, from from earlier. So let's yes, let's make that update. Great. So we updated our code and we created a new alarm. You can see we had the the new alarm and then we updated the code. So let's go back to the console and let's refresh this. So everything seems quiet so far. Um, we can open our alarms dashboard and we should see our new alarm, anomaly alarm. Yep. And so far it has not alarmed yet. So um, this is the, I guess this is the part of the demo where I should probably just force this to uh, start returning on thousands and uh, see if we can get this to, to be out of the band. So let's do this in metrics together. So we can actually see, let's do this the last uh, hour. Interestingly, it doesn't have the band yet, so I wonder if AWS is still uh, predicting the model. Uh, in which case, this might not be the most interesting demo, but let's try it anyway. Um, so let's do this. Or let's actually just make it more likely, I guess. still have some variability. Let's do this. All right. So that should update our code again. And we'll hopefully see it go into alarm. We'll see. I don't know. I actually don't know how, how long it takes for these models to compute. Um, usually I would expect to see a gray band around this metric indicating that we actually had a detection band. So that updated. So uh, I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back in a few minutes uh, to hopefully see our alarm go off. It's like cook it's like a cooking show, right? It's like the you go to the oven and then the thing's already there, it's already made. So let's we'll come back in a couple minutes. All right, and we're back. And uh, unfortunately, I guess I'm <laughs> the faking it is not going to really work so well. Um, I uh, I actually uh, spent some time reading the documentation. It seems like you actually might need like a day or two of data for this to actually work. <laughs> I probably should have read the docs before I tried this. Um, I will show um, an example uh, on an existing metric that's kind of pretty long lived. This is just a you know. CPU utilization for uh, a machine that we already had that was just happened to be running for a long time. And so you can see kind of uh, what you would expect to see uh, by doing the, the example I showed. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it's not going to work out in terms of uh, being able to show it um, live, given just how long it's going to take to, uh, to have the uh, detection band show up. So thanks for watching today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please uh, follow Plumy Corp on Twitter or myself. Uh, you can also submit requests and bugs uh, on GitHub. Uh, if you have any, any requests uh, for future episodes, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe the video, uh, and we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks very much.